All right, let's hope for a repeat of last week, including the early look ahead on Akron, who won outright. We went 4-1-1 one, and one with Saturday college football selections on the Power 5 last week. Of course, I remain number one at wagertalk.com in CFB this season. Going back to last season, I'm 42-21, and 21, my last 63 college football releases, if you can believe it, plus 66.9 units. And that includes 13-5, and five, my last 18 heading into this week. And, of course, last weekend with the client plays wasn't so good. But we're going to bounce back. Coming up, I'll be telling you about my top selections for the weekend that you can get at wagertalk.com. But first, got to run through the Power 5 for this week. No surprise. There's a ranked team I'm looking to fade. A live dog at noon Eastern. And get a little exotic with some totals in the SEC. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with your thoughts on these selections. And if you'd be so kind, hit that thumbs up. Your support, always greatly appreciated. Earlier this week, I gave out three underdogs. You can check out Thursday's show. If you missed those, here's another underdog. We're starting today. Number one, Syracuse, plus four versus Virginia Tech. Look, anyone that watched Syracuse's game last Thursday versus Pitt, knows things could not have gone any worse for the Orange. Quarterback Kyle McCord throws five interceptions, including three pick sixes in the first half. I repeat, three pick sixes in the first half. Thus, his team had no chance of winning that game, obviously. But Cuse did outgain Pitt, 327 to 217. And now I know some of that's because Pitt's offense didn't need to do much and wasn't on the field. But you look at the Virginia Tech side here, okay? Virginia Tech, Syracuse's opponent this week. Well, they were outgained 356 233 in a 26-21-6 win over Georgia Tech last week. The Hokies not only benefited from two Yellow Jackets turnovers, but they also had two fourth down stops inside the 30-yard line. Vatek has Clemson on deck in Blacksburg, so they may be looking ahead to next week here. The Hokies have beaten absolutely no one of substance so far this season, by the way. Syracuse's only other loss prior to last week, by the way, was only by two points. Now, they've had a couple extra days to prepare and have the home field advantage at the Carrier Dome. Also worth noting, a couple key injuries on the Vatek side at running back and left tackle. It's also a big revenge spot for Cuse after getting rolled 38-10 in Blacksburg last season. I'm taking the points after each team had a phony result last week. So give me Syracuse plus four. Number two, uh, surprisingly, I'm on the favorite in our next matchup. Minnesota minus three at number 24, Illinois. Yes, this will only be the seventh instance since the start of the 2021 season where a ranked team is getting points at home against an unranked opponent. Those ranked home dogs, five and one straight up in the previous six spots. However, I am on the record as calling this Illinois team a total fraud. Blown out last week by Oregon, as predicted here on the Power Five. Uh, they should have lost by more than 14 at Penn State. Uh, Illinois' three wins over ranked teams. Those were Kansas, Nebraska, and Michigan. None of those three are ranked any longer. The Illini were out gained in two of those three wins. The other one, uh, at Nebraska, they sort of stole in overtime. They also needed to, to stop a two-point conversion in OT to beat Purdue. So 2-0 in overtime games for Brett Bielema's team. I just don't like this Illini team at all. Meanwhile, Minnesota, off its highest scoring effort in a Big Ten game since 2019, last week, they blew out Maryland. Quarterback Max Brosmer, four touchdown passes in that one. I think the Gophers should be able to run the ball effectively here as well. Darius Taylor, he averages 4.5 yards after contact. Illinois' run defense isn't very good. And more importantly, this is a big game for P.J. Fleck, the Minnesota head coach, who is 0-3 straight up and against the number versus Brett Bielema, despite going off as the favorite in all three of those games. Fourth time is the charm for Fleck, I believe. So yes, I disagree with my morning wager co-host Mark Zinno on this one. Let's lay it with the road team. Number three, Arkansas team total under 21 and a half. This is minus 105 at DraftKings. I talked about this game a little bit on the college football kickoff show with Joe Ranieri earlier this week. I just don't see the Razorbacks offense having much success at all going up against an Ole Miss defense that is number one in the country in both tackles for loss and PBUs. That's passes broken up. Going into last week's game versus Oklahoma, the Rebels' defense was also number one in the country against the run. Arkansas is going to struggle to run the ball here. They were going to struggle to run the ball no matter what uh, against this great Ole Miss defensive front. But no Jaquin and Jackson for the Hogs. Ooh. Uh, also, the offensive line is going to struggle to protect quarterback Taylor Green. Prior to hanging 58 points last week on Mississippi State, who is the worst team in the SEC, Arkansas 
had scored just 10, 19, and 17 points. It's three previous games. So I like the under 21 and a half team total there. By the way, uh, each of the first three games I've gone through here on the Power 5 all kick off at noon Eastern. Vatek Cuse will be on the CW network after Dawson's Creek, I suppose. Uh, Minnesota, Illinois is on FS1. Ole Miss, Arkansas is on ESPN. Number four, let's get back into it. The world's largest cocktail party. Sounds right up my alley. Florida versus number two, Georgia. This one starts at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Of course, the same neutral site, Jacksonville, as per usual. Although the next two years, take note, uh, game will be in Atlanta and Tampa. So all you tailgaters, be aware of that. Anyway, I'm calling for a low-scoring first half here. First half, under 26 and a half. Now, history suggests Florida won't be doing much scoring at all throughout this game. Not only have the Gators lost 12 straight times as a double-digit underdog, but they've only scored 47 points the last three years against this Georgia defense, which, in case you forgot, just held Texas to only 15 points two weeks ago. So, as long as the Georgia offense doesn't go wild early, then we should be in good shape here. And I don't think that Georgia offense goes wild early here. Why? They're only 68th in the country. In points per game in the first half, averaging just 13.3. So first half under it is, 26 and a half. All right, let's round things out. Enough college football for you guys here on the show this week. I'm sneaking in a soccer play for Saturday. Let's head over to England where Nottingham Forest hosts West Ham in Premier League action. Note, with all this time change wonkiness we're dealing with this weekend, matches over in Europe starting an hour later than normal, at least on Saturday. This is an 11 a.m. Eastern start. Uh, instead of the usual 10 a.m. Eastern starts we get from the Premier League on Saturdays. I'm going to keep the handicap real simple. For those of you who are interested in betting some soccer, West Ham's just not very good, as you know. Uh, they got lucky to beat Manchester United last week with the late penalty. The Hammers have conceded two or more goals, eight of their last 13 away matches in the Premier League. Meanwhile, Forrest have conceded the second fewest number of goals in the league this season, only one match where they've conceded two goals. Furthermore, the Tricky Trees try to make it three straight on the bounce here. That's three straight wins uh, for those uninitiated with soccer terminology. I think Forrest gets the job done here. Love the plus price on the three-way line. Nottingham Forest rounds out the Power Five. And let's recap that Power Five for you here. Syracuse plus four versus Virginia Tech. Number two, Minnesota, minus three at Illinois. Yes, rare road favorite from yours truly. Number three, Arkansas, team total under 21 and a half. You should find that at DraftKings. Number four, world's largest cocktail party, Florida, Georgia. We like the first half under 26 and a half. And then number five, most importantly, Nottingham Forest on the three-way line, plus 110 versus West Ham. Again, go ahead, comment down below with your thoughts and questions. I'll be checking uh, the, the comment section throughout the next 24 hours. Let me know what you're betting on this weekend as well. Love to see that. And after you've smashed that like button, I know you've already done it, uh, head on over to wt.buzz slash bp where you can find all my winning picks for the weekend. Again, uh, number one in college football this season, coming off a nice 4% best bet winner in the NFL as well on Thursday with the Jets who were driving me insane for most of that game, but we did cash that ticket. Uh, by the end of the day Friday, maybe already up by the time you're listening to this, my complete college my complete college card is already up for Saturday. Four plays for $29. My complete NFL card should be up uh, by this evening as well. I'll probably sprinkle in some soccer as well. Already talked about my great CFB record, 42 and 21, plus 66.9 units going back to last season, number one this season. Well, I'm also number one in soccer. All soccer since April, an additional 39.6 units of profit there. And don't forget, I'm hitting 63% with NFL sides as well this season. One more time, wt.buzz slash pp. And on that note, that will do it for Saturday's edition of the Power Five. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube page. And until next time, guys, uh, let's catch some tickets.